Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ines Alea, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to smash things in Adobe After Effects. If you can't beat the fear, just do it scared. This video was inspired by a TikTok post from Will Smith where he smashed the letters and the effect got me really intrigued to try it myself so I replicated the shot in order to make a tutorial for you guys. I think it's pretty close. So this is what we're going to recreate in this video. If you want to follow along with the exact same video files as me, I will provide you with a link where you can download those. Also, if you are interested in the project file and you want to deconstruct everything, I will also provide that with a link in the description below. So before we start into the tutorial, I quickly want to mention Corsair. They sent me these amazing Virtuos RGB wireless headset and it's really incredible. They feel super comfortable, have crystal clear audio and it really comes in handy when I'm working with audio. So if you're interested in that, I will also leave a link. These are the headsets that I'm using. All right, so without further ado, let's start up Adobe After Effects. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and this is the footage that I'm using. I know it looks a little bit silly when nothing's applied to it, but yeah, you have to have some imagination here. All right, so I'm going to drag my video into a new composition and then I will press L twice on the keyboard and that will reveal my waveform here. And obviously we can listen to that later. So first I will create a new composition and this is going to be my text box. We're going to make this like 350 by 120, something like that. And then we go right over here and we're going to choose a rectangle tool and then just make sure that the color is white and the stroke is set to none. Uh, click OK. And now we double click on this rounded rectangle tool. Immediately it's going to create a rounded rectangle tool. We can jump into the rectangle right here and we can go into the rectangle path. You can change the roundness right here if you want it more round or less round. So that's where you would do that. Then we can go to the text tool and we can write if. Okay, so I'm going to click on my text. I will go to window, align, and I will just center my text. And then before we continue, I just want to do one more thing in the shape, rectangle size. We want to uncheck this uh, aspect ratio thing. So that's going to come in handy later. We're also going to rename this text box right here in the project manager. We hit return text box if. Then we're going to duplicate this and we're going to rename this another word from our quote. So, um, so our quote is, if you can't beat the fear, just do it scared. So I'm going to duplicate this composition for each word. Duplication you can do by going to edit and duplicate or control D. So I'm going to do that. All right, so once you have that for each word, you wanna jump into each of them. So right here I have the text box, if still open, I will go into the shape layer and right here in the size, I will just bring this down for each letter. So we have if right here, we're going to write you. So we take our text tool, we click here, you. And there we go. So now we'll go back to my original footage and I will just place everything in there. So I'm going to click on the first one, click on the last, bring them all in here. And then I'm going to search each of them and just place them in the scene. I'm also going to try and bring them together, so. And I'm also going to just press S and just scale them down a little bit and bring them a little bit closer. Okay, so now it's really important that we're going to look at where I hit my arm. So we have the first elbow that I'm giving here. I'm also noticing that my compositions right here aren't long enough, so I'm going to double click on them, right click in each composition and just make them longer. And then drag them out and make this longer. So I'm going to do that for each composition. And then we just have to look at where I hit my elbow. The first elbow comes like right here. So the beat is in the right position. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger to stand out a little bit more. The fear, we're going to make it smaller and just do it as well. So we're going to select all of these, press S on the keyboard and just scale them down. And then place them wherever you want. And then we have the last kick. That's like right here for the scared. So we're going to place that here, make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to make these even smaller just so I can fit them in there. There we go. 
And now you have to listen to the text and trim each word. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to concentrate on all these small letters around uh, the around the button for beat and like right when I smash I'm going to just uncheck beat for now. And I'm also going to give this a color yellow so I can see it easily and I'm going to uncheck that. So I smash like right here. Uh, so I'm going to select all the keyframes except for the beat. So I'm going to hold control here and then press P on the keyboard. I'm also going to turn all of these into a 3D layer and I'm going to click on the stopwatch for the position and for the orientation. So now I create a keyframe for all these layers here. So now what I want to do is I want to move like one, two, three, four, five frames off. And I just want to kind of move them around like they were actually being hit by like a shockwave. So I'm going to move it over here. Then I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit the W key on the keyboard and rotate these here. And I'm going to then press uh, the selection tool and put this U right here and just do that for every individual uh, word here. Okay, so if you press U on the keyboard for all these layers, we can see we just created a, a new keyframe then, like with this animation, boom, it gets a shockwave. And then like until right here, we actually wanna move all of them individually a little bit more just to give that kind of nice flow uh, when they are like in space, they're kind of floaty. So I'm going to just move them very, very slightly with a rotation and a small position. Now what I want to do is go for that center keyframe for all of these and make sure you have selected all of them and then, and then hold control on the keyboard and click here. So we have this right here. So this is going to make the animation flow a little bit better. So right here we have a quick kind of burst out. We can even speed it up by moving this a little bit more to the left. Maybe move the first keyframe a little bit more to the left. That's perfect. All right. So once you're satisfied with that, we can select all of these keyframes, except for the beat and the scared. And then we are going for layer, pre-compose this, move all the attributes, and we're just going to rename this words. So now let's concentrate on the beat part here. So we have, if you can beat fear, we're just going to enable that again. Right here, I smash it. I actually want to click on it, layer, recompose this, move all the attributes. We're going to rename this beat shatter. So now we have this composition on the entire size of our, um, of our composition, of our canvas. So we're going to zoom in here. And we're going to apply the shatter effect. So we're going to search shatter. Uh, right here, we already see this. We're going into the shape. We're going to change the shape from brick to glass. And then we want to jump into the force here. We want to set the radius to zero. Uh, we also want to increase the repetitions to something like 70. And there we go. And I want to make sure that like the shatter elements are in the center of my text. So move the orientation just a little bit. And there we go. And I'll go like one frame back. So I'm just not hitting it yet. And I'm going to set my Radius for force one to zero, hit a keyframe, one, two, three, four, and we're going to five, six, and we're going to just scale this up. And we're also going to move that force to that location. So it's actually coming from there. So now we're kind of bursting this into pieces. Move it over a little bit more. Boom, that's looking great. Okay, so I'm also going to change here uh, the extrusion depth, but first I wanna see the rendered part. Uh, so we have this 3D depth. We don't really want that. We want to move that to 0 0.05. And there we go. And then we also want to go into the lighting and material. And just increase this a little bit. So we have a little bit more brightness. And there we go. So we have our first smash. Let's see how that looks. So that's looking good, but it's not uh, strong enough. So we're going to click on the beat, go into the shatter element, and for the strength we're going to set that to 10, and then go into the physics, we're going to set the gravity to 10 as well, 
We're also going to move it a little bit over here and uh, let's see how that looks. So now we can go and apply a motion blur to that. We can use CC force motion blur. And there we go. We're also going to jump into the words right here and enable motion blur for all of these and then go back into your footage and click on this right here. And that will allow the motion blur to come true when they kind of move over and then enable motion blur for the composition. And then you will see a lot of motion blur that's going to make it a lot more realistic. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to uh, layer, pre-compose this and move all the attributes into a new composition. Scared Shatter. And we're also going to click, like right here, we're also going to apply the Shatter effect. So we already know our settings. We go into the shape, we set this to glass, we set the repetition to 70. Uh, we're going into the extrusion depth to 0 0.05. We go into the physics, we set the gravity to 10. We go into force field one and we move it over to my foot. There we go. We set the radius to zero and we create a keyframe, move one, two, and we're going to increase the radius here. We're going to press the U on the keyboard, move the first keyframe a little bit backwards and see the reaction. Now set it to the rendered view. And I'm going to increase even the strength to like 15 this time. I'm also going to put the force a little bit more from the bottom so they fly a little bit up. Press B here, preview. And that's looking amazing. Okay, so great. Another thing you could do is uh, duplicate your layer and go into the shatter element for this one and go into the shape and set this, for example, to 250. 200 is the maximum, but there we go. We can see now smaller pieces and bigger pieces at the same time. So that's also pretty cool that we can do that. We can jump for the other one and duplicate it here and also go into the shape and set it to like 150. There we go. Now we have some variation. It's looking a lot more detailed. So now we have the words. We want to do the same thing here, but here we're going to do a shockwave that is coming from here. So we're going to click on our, uh, we're, do, we're going to click on our words. We're also going to apply the shatter effect. And we're going to set the force here to be from here. Like, we're going to start around here when I'm already shattering. I'm going to set a keyframe for the radius at zero. I'm going to move a little bit forward, take more time this time, and increase this quite a lot so we cover the entire area here. Looking great. Set the shape to a glass and also set the repetition to like 70. Let's go for 120 here and set then the extrusion to 0 0.05. Set the physics. Uh, well, actually, let's keep the gravity as it is and set the strength here to like 10. Set it to rendered. And let's see what we have. So we can see the shockwave right here that's reacting really nicely. Uh, so what I will do is use my force motion blur. I'm going to select my layer and just paste it to paste it to the layers that don't have it yet. And then you can also use like some smoke puffs. Uh, I will also like to just spice it up a little bit. So I'm going to apply like a tint effect to that. A little bit less. Press T on the keyboard, make it like a lot less transparent and then kind of cut it off here and just paste that to like everything that breaks apart. So like right here, we have the shatter. We're scared. We can bring this actually below our text here. And then I'm also going to create a new solid layer, make it white. And this is going to be our ripple. And here I do want to look at like the radius from our words. I'm going to select my radius and go select my words, go over here and show wireframe plus forces and then go to the ripple and uh, the new layer we created and choose like your ellipse tool, create a circle, press M twice on the keyboard to reveal your mask expansion. Click on the stopwatch, move the frames backwards where there is no radius and then just uh, enable this layer. 
and reverse it until you don't see it anymore. And then like move forwards until this is entirely screen filled. And then you're going to do the same thing with the expansion here and make it screen filled. So that way it's going to be the average same size as our, um, our shockwave. So we're going to duplicate our mask, control D, and this time we're going to subtract it. And then like at the very end, we want to change the value here of our expansion to be a lower number. And then like right here, we also want it to be a lower number. And now we have shockwave. So you can make them bigger and uh, like you can make it bigger by just decreasing this number right here. And that way you have like a bigger shockwave. And we can press F on the keyboard to reveal the feather for each mask and just feather it a little bit. And then we're also going to apply a turbulence displacement to this, increase the size and hold alt and click on the stopwatch for evolution, right time times 250. And then we're going to click on it, layer pre-compose this, and this uh, move all the attributes is going to be our ripple shock, ripple map. We're going to uncheck that. Now you have two options. So. Uh, make sure you don't see it in solo everything. So we actually see everything and uh, for the words, I'm going to set this back to rendered. And then for the ripple map, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and either you can apply a displacement map, which comes in Adobe After Effects. You can use this and add a li little bit of a ripple. Uh, that way you're going to have like a shock wave. You can see a little bit of displacement in our video, but I prefer to use chromatic displacement from Red Giant, uh, where you can use this map and it's going to have like a little bit of an RGB effect here. And there we go. You can see a little bit of a, this is like a more advanced displacement. So if you have the plugin, use this. If you don't, you just use regular displacement. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, I'm going to set the amount to like seven. I'm going to then right click new and adjustment layer. I'm quickly going to uh, add a transform here. I'm also going to add a motion tile. And for the motion tile, I'm going to set this to mirror. I'm going to set this to 150, 150 for the output width and height and bring this above my transform and then hold Alt. And I'm also going to add a slider control and then I'm going to hold Alt and click on the position for the transform. Here I'm going to write wiggle open parentheses and I'm going to set like 15 comma and pick whip the slider control and then close the parentheses and we're going to click out of it. Now we go to the moment when nothing is broken yet. We're going to set a keyframe for the slider control to zero. We move like two frames. We set it to like 50 and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames later or like nine frames later, we set it back to zero. We press U on the keyboard select this keyframe and then uh, we're going to right click it, keyframe assistance, easy ease, jump into the graph editor and just bring this out a touch. There we go. So it's going to come to a slow stop that way. We're going to just copy these keyframes and just put them at the same place for the scare, uh, for the beat part. So let's see where I beat the beat, beat the beat. Yes, it's getting that late. That's like right here. So I'm going to click here and add these keyframes also. So it's also shaking here. And then I can also uncheck use composition shutter speed. I can actually set this to 180 or something. And there we go. So now we have some screen shake. Let's uh, do a little preview. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. All right, and that's it. So now it's up to you to add some sound effects in there, add a little bit of inspirational music and you're done. So if you're looking for the right music platform for sound effects, I would highly advise you Epidemic Sound. I have a link for that in the description below where you can go and check them out. I'm using their sound effects and just search on shatter effects and you will find it. All right. All right, so that's it for this video. I'm so glad you made it until here. If you enjoyed watching my video, I would highly appreciate it if you would give me one of these. Also, maybe consider subscribing if you aren't already and hit the notification bell so you stay notified when I upload new videos. And be sure to pay our website a visit if you're interested in anything filmmaking related, creatorgalaxy.com. We have a bunch of awesome stuff for you there. I will also link that in the description. Apart from that, I'm going to leave you with one of my other videos so you can continue watching if you want to. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, create epic videos.